Hey guys, Dr. Will here. Um, so we're gonna do a three-part series and we're gonna talk about the three phases of injury. So today we're gonna talk about phase one, which is sort of the reaction acute inflammation phase, okay? So this is the phase right after your injury, anywhere between you know two and seven days um, after the injury. So during this phase, you're likely gonna have potentially a little bit of swelling, some discoloration, you're gonna have issues with mobility, if it's a lower body pain, you might have issues with weight bearing. If it's an upper body pain, you may have difficulties with gripping or lifting things. And obviously, if it's, if it's a spine pain, you may have pain with certain positions such as sitting or turning your head, okay? And so we wanna give you guys a little bit of insight into what you should be thinking during this phase and maybe what sort of treatment you should be seeking out, okay? So we have a little do and do not list for this initial acute phase of injury. So on the do list, we, we have rest, okay? Whenever the area is initially injured, um, let's say it's your wrist, for example, you wanna rest the wrist for a couple of days at least, if not longer, if not a week or two, depending on the severity of the injury. But especially if there's still swelling, there's still bruising in there, there's pain with movement, you wanna rest it. So you wanna keep it immobilized if possible by using a brace or a splint, um, just so you can sort of allow the healing process to happen. Number two is gonna be ice, right? So after an acute injury, we're gonna ice for the first three days or so, um, especially if there's still a lot of swelling and we wanna reduce that swelling. Uh, number three is gonna to be to move other joints, right? So um, even if you have a wrist injury, you can still go to the gym and do lower body exercises. You can walk on the treadmill. You can use a uh, stationary bike and things like that. That way you can just kinda of keep your body healthy and moving without aggravating the injured joint. Number four is gonna be working surrounding soft tissues, right? So if someone comes in with you know, a wrist injury, maybe we'll be working on the forearm muscles, maybe I'll be in working on the hand a little bit, trying to open up the joints of the hand, um, just so everything moves a little better, we get more blood flow to the area, and things like that. Um, you know, of course, over-the-counter medications, those are an option if your doctor recommends them and, and they're safe for you. Um, bracing and wrapping, like I already mentioned, and then this is a very important time to focus on healthy lifestyle, right? So if you have a you know relatively serious injury, you wanna make sure that you're eating right, that you're hydrating, that you're sleeping right, that you're trying to keep your stress down, because um, that's just gonna allow your immune system to be stronger and allow it to heal quicker. Obviously, if you're putting poor foods in your body, you're not sleeping, your body's just not as strong and durable as someone else um, who's, who's making the right lifestyle decisions. Now to the do not list. So do not jump right back into the sport or activity that you came from, right? So if you have, for instance, an ankle injury playing basketball, don't go get right back on the basketball court with a bruised and swollen ankle. Obviously, that doesn't make sense. You're much more likely to re-injure it at that point. Do not put heat on a swollen and discolored ankle, um, or any joint for that matter. Obviously, um, initially, you want to try to keep the swelling down. Heat is going to increase the swelling and bring more fluid to the area. Um, don't load that joint, right? So if it's an ankle injury, if it's a knee injury, you don't want to be walking around and, and weight bearing a lot because that's going to um, increase the swelling. It's going to increase the pain and discomfort in that joint. Um, don't try to do things to numb the pain necessarily, just so you can kind of push through and, and go back to daily activities. Um, obviously, as before, I recommended, you know, there are there is a place for anti-inflammatories. There's a place, you know, some people prefer taking natural supplements. Obviously, that's that's more the route that we recommend here. Um, but certainly if your doctor you know, gives you a prescription or gives you an over-the-counter medication, there's a time for both of those things as well. Um, but don't try to just use those to numb the pain so you can go back to the gym or go back to the basketball court or back to the jiu-jitsu mat. Um, don't push through the pain, right? We have talked about before, there is time when pain is okay. Some pain is safe. Right after an acute injury, especially if you haven't been properly evaluated and diagnosed by a professional, you don't wanna be pushing through any kinds of pain. Pain is an indication um, at that point that there's some inflammation and there's some damage to the body. Don't eat junk food This kind of go, or, or neglect sleep. This goes back to what I was talking about with the do list. Um, don't just let your lifestyle fall apart just because you're out of your routine. Um, that should open up more time for you to drink water, eat anti-inflammatory foods like fruits and vegetables and certain meats. Um, maybe get a little more sleep, maybe take, take a nap, rest a little bit more. Um, these are all things that are gonna help you heal. And um, if you're not doing them, they can hinder your healing. So we just wanna give you guys a list of some do's and do nots. Um, obviously where chiropractic care would fall into this is we can adjust the joints around the area. We can help use modalities to de decrease the pain and swelling at the area of the injury. Um, we can do soft tissue work around the uh, joint that's injured. Like I said, we can use our active release technique, we can use our dry needling, 
We can use our instrument assisted soft tissue um, to help uh, heal the area. Um, additionally, we can give you maybe some corrective exercise or from some gentle joint movements that you can do to start to improve the healing as well. Um, and of course, most, most importantly, if you do have an injury in sport or in everyday life, you can come to a chiropractor and you can be evaluated. And at that point, your chiropractor can give you a pretty clear timeline, a recovery plan, and a treatment plan for your injury. So um, you don't want to let injuries go on too long without being evaluated because, you know, you know, generally people aren't educated on this sort of thing, so they don't necessarily know what's going on. So, of course, our number one piece of advice when you are injured, go see a professional, have somebody who's studied this topic, is educated and is licensed in this, um, that can evaluate your injury and give you a diagnosis, and, and that way they can help guide you through the recovery process so then you can come out even stronger than before. Thanks, guys.